world, where the number of movies available is great, but many are so bad, you'll learn a new definition of hate. One man sifts and reviews through the movie sludge. One man will be the movie cop, jury, and judge. He goes by many names, but you know him by Movies Merida. Hey, all you beautiful movie loving people out there, live from a red carpet somewhere, surrounded by celebrities. This is the Movies America podcast with Van Ebert, where movie reviews meet cold brews. Van will review your favorite and maybe not so favorite movies while enjoying some ice cold beers and saying cheers. Now let's head into the theater and join our illustrious movie reviewer du jour, who's no doubt got the beer ready to pour, Van Ebert. Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. Welcome to the Movies America Podcast Monster Truck Rally. We've got smashing and crashing and bashing. Yes, this is a Michael Bay movie review with all kinds of slam, bang, bayhem. Oh, yeah. Hey, everybody, get ready and strap yourselves in, all right, because we have got a Michael Bay crisscross crash movie for you today. Oh, yeah. So we've got today the latest movie coming out this week called Woo Woo Ambulance. I'm sorry, brother. Sorry that I brought you into this. I just wanted things to be the way they used to be. That's my brother, Will. I could use some help. My wife needs this surgery. This is real life. How's that right? You put your life down on the line for this country? You leave your family, your home? How much do you need? 231. How about more? 32 million. I need an extra man. I came here for a loan. Look, have I ever gotten you anything that I couldn't get you out of? It's time for you to do something for your family. What can I do you for, officer? We're just doing a transfer in the back. I'll let uh, you in in 20 minutes. Uh, if I could just get it done real quick, because I'm on the clock. Promise not to rob the place. Oh. <laughs> Seriously, because that would be bad for my job. Okay? <laughs> I promise. All right, okay. All right. All okay, right. Come all right. on. Right. <laughs> okay. Uh, 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 uh. Let's go, D. You are all going to have the greatest story to tell at dinner tonight. Get out! Don't shoot a cop! Go, 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 go! Lock everything down. Nothing gets out. All the leaves are brown. Get out! Oh. What do you want? Just gonna borrow it. I got a cop shot. I gotta get him to the hospital. I'm gonna need you to help us. Why don't you help us? Now that is a smooth cover of that Mamas and Papas classic California Dream in there in that trailer. All right, well, before we uh, climb on board ambulance, let's uh, go ahead and take care of some necessary info. Yeah, of course. I just want to remind everybody to uh, to, to know that this is on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, iHeartRadio, and many other podcast platforms, you can find this here podcast, Movies America. And if you're on Apple Podcasts, uh, please feel free to scroll all the way down to the bottom of all the episodes and give it a five-star rating, if you please, pretty please, with sugar on top. I'll even throw some whipped cream and sprinkles on as a bonus, if you would just do me that solid. Yep. And then, hey, while you're down there anyway, hey, Throw a review in there. Throw a review in there. You know what? The review, that could be very, very short. You know, I could just be like, uh, hey, this podcast is fantastic. It, it made my life worth living. Or uh, this podcast is terrible, and I'm going to stick my head in an oven. Okay. Don't do that. It's just a joke. <laughs> okay? Don't do that. Um, if you want to make life easy for yourself here with this podcast, uh, all you have to do is like up at the very top right, there's uh, the three dots, the ellipsis. You can click on that and do the follow show option. That way you get all the episodes downloaded automatically. And that's one less thing for you have to remember, you know, to to do in your life, uh, you know, to download episodes. Make 
you know, work smarter, not harder. That's what I always say. Uh, this podcast, uh, the episodes are also on MoviesMerica.com. I'm also on Twitter and Instagram under MoviesMerica. If you want to share anything with me or check out any of my, uh, my goofy posts that I put out there. And also you can DM me and uh, you know, ask me the kind of questions, give me some movie recommendations, let me know something you want me to review, all that kind of jazz, right? Right? Okay. And also, uh, you, you know what? Typically, I do. I, I'm uh, chugging, a, you know, chugging, a, and I'm chugging. I'm, I'm enjoying a beer uh, on each episode, but not so much this week here. I'm still on that 75 hard fitness program where I can't drink for 75 days. Now, as of Right now, when I'm recording this, I only have 19 days. That's right, 19 days of the 75 hard. So uh, I have 19 days to figure out what my first beer is. I'm going to be uh, just savoring after that 19 days, you know. But uh, yeah, I oh boy, you, you know, in life you have to have things to look forward to, and that that definitely fits the bill. All right, so hey, enough of that uh, right there. Let's go ahead and let's get into. Wee, wee, wee! Ambulance, yes. So Ambulance is, like I said, the latest cinematic offering from Michael Bay. And the, the basic synopsis is you've got uh, this, this uh, Marine veteran uh, named Will Sharp, and he's played by Yahya Abdul-Mateen II here. Hopefully I'm uh, not butchering that name. And he, he's, you've seen him in, in stuff like, if you, if you saw the HBO series Watchmen, uh, he plays, well, I was gonna t- about to tell you his true character in that movie, but that would definitely be a major spoiler, but he plays Regina King's husband in Watchmen. He was just in the latest terrible Candyman movie. <laughs> so, But don't hold that against him. Uh, he was also in another, uh, he was in a Netflix series, series that I really like called The Get Down, where he played a bad guy. Uh, once you see him, you'll be like, oh, yeah, okay, yeah, that guy, that guy, I, I dig that guy. And so he plays, yeah, like I said, he plays Will Sharp. And he was adopted by Jake Gyllenhaal's character's uh, family when he was a little kid. And so Jake Gyllenhaal plays Danny, Danny Sharp. And that's why Will is Will Sharp. And they are brothers. And they consider each other real brothers, you know, which is a very cool uh, facet of this movie. And so, yeah, poor Will Sharp's uh, wife uh, has, you know, she's got, she, she needs some medical attention. She needs uh, surgery for a dire medical uh, situation. And so the beginning of the movie, they show Will, he's like calling around to like Veterans Administration, uh, you know, folks, you know, and, and he's, he's getting it, you know, the, the, the run around that you hear about too much that veterans deal with when, you know, they're just trying to get, you know, basic uh, medical care. You know, you just hear about that. It's, it, that makes me sick. Don't even get me started on that. You know, serve your country. And then, you, you know, you, you, you can't even get the time of day from him when you need something, uh, you know, in a crucial way. But anyway, so he's trying to get money, and he's he's, he's definitely getting nowhere with that. And so I, he apparently realizes, hey, you know what, I got to go to my, my brother Danny because his brother Danny is a professional bank robber. And uh, he he knows that his brother Danny's got money, so he's going to go over there. He's going to get a, a loan from him. And when he goes over there, now Danny knows he's coming over to see him. Well, he gets over there and he expects us to just get a loan from his brother, but his brother says, hey, I haven't got the money. I've got it all tied up in this latest bank robbery that I'm planning. Hey, by the way, we're doing this bank robbery right now. You know, and then one of the guys that he's doing the bank robbery will say, hey, is this the guy? And then obviously Will starts getting the idea like, okay, uh, they had this plan. I was coming down. Danny had a plan where he was going to try to talk me into this bank robbery. Well, anyway, so uh, just out of desperation, just out of need, uh, Will agrees to go on this uh, this bank robbery in downtown L.A. Uh, with his brother Danny. And as I'm sure you've seen from the trailer, and you can tell from the trailer there uh, that I played, yeah, um, yeah, things don't exactly go over smoothly. And next thing you know, Danny and Will are in an ambulance. They're holding a EMT hostage who's trying to save a, a shot. Uh, cops' life in the back of the ambulance. You've got, you know, every law enforcement agent, you know, uh, within uh, 70 miles uh, <laughs> chasing them, chasing them down in this movie. And that's the basic premise uh, of the movie. Not a not an overly complicated plot by any means, but very riveting. You know, it's like some of the the, the movies that uh, that you know that you find the most riveting, the most captivating. They don't have the most complicated plots. I mean, um, Conan the Barbarian. That was a 
riveting movie. You know, riveting movies. Like, but didn't have the most complicated plot, right? So same thing with Ambulance. You know, it's and so it's it's you know Jake Gyllenhaal. He does a fantastic job as Danny. You know, Jake Gyllenhaal even when he's in a even when he's like in a big budget movie or the well, actually, I say big budget, but this is like one of the lower budgeted Michael Bay movies. This is like a, had a, has a budget of forty million. Uh, for this movie, forty million. That's like twenty minutes of one of his Transformer movies right there. So, uh, but he he puts the whole forty million, you know, or pretty close to the whole forty million on the screen. Uh, but uh, so, but where I was going is Jake Gyllenhaal. Even when he's doing like a big budget movie like this, you know, he still brings that uh, eclectic kind of independent movie. Kinda, you know, very uh, that um, that off the beaten path kind of sensibility to to his roles. Uh, to his acting, you know, because Jake Gyllenhaal, he started off with, you know, being in kind of independent, smaller movies. His, his, the movie that really shot him to start him when he was, when he was still a kid is uh, Donnie Darko. And that by no means was a, you know, a big studio production, you know, big budget movie like Ambulance is. And yeah, so Jake Gyllenhaal, yeah, he just chews up the scenery in this. He's, He's just got this. He's very um, charismatic. Very thinks very quick on his feet, and I didn't I didn't catch this, but I think maybe I suspect in this movie, you know, like I said, Will is is, is was in the military. He's a marine. I, I kind of get the impression that Danny was in the military too. Uh, maybe not, but he seems to handle himself pretty well. Uh, you know, I guess he's a, he's a professional bank robber, and his and his dad. They explain in the movie his dad was a bank robber, a ruthless bank robber, and so I guess you don't have to be in the military to, you know, know how to operate an M4, you know, automatic weapon, or you know, know about uh, explosives and and tactics and all that stuff. Uh, you know, he's you know, they call him a professional bank robber for a reason, right? But so I think he was. Yeah, I, I, I'm guessing he was in the military, uh, just like Will was, but he handles himself. Uh, pretty well, and yeah, he he's 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 hard edged, but also he's got kind of a a effeminate, softer side to him a little bit. He's not he's like he's like today's. I, I guess the best way to you know put it is yeah, he's kind of like today's man's man, you know, for lack of a better way of putting it. I mean, for God's sakes, there's a <laughs> there's a absurd moment where. They're in the ambulance. They're in the heat of the chase, and he's like, "I gotta, I gotta chill out, man. I gotta relax. I gotta relax." And so he busts, he busts out the Christopher Cross "Sailing," uh, the song "Sailing" by Christopher Cross, uh, on, and he he's playing it in his earbuds, and him and and Will are in the middle of this high intensity, chaotic, uh, you know, car chase there, and they've got uh, "Sailing" by Christopher Cross blasting. You know, they're singing to it. You know, just cool, calm down. So he's got. So he's not just like a one-dimensional bad guy, right? You know, he's he uh, he's he's a Renaissance man as far as uh, you know, a criminal goes, and and it, just the fact that Will was singing along with him, apparently, you know, Will you know, Will Sharp is uh, you know a man of the world, and, and you know, he's got eclectic taste as well. And yeah, like I said, he has this it, this 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 absurd scene where they're both singing, sailing, and that is just pure Michael Bay right there. He that's a Bayism if I've ever seen one, you know, where he's got like just, you know, this, you know, explosions and, and, and chases and helicopters flying around and he throws in, you know, just, uh, j- just some random pop culture movie you know, or moment that's completely out of place. And, you know, I, you know, I, I find myself kind of chuckling at it, but at, you know, most of me was like, okay, come on, Michael Bay. <laughs> you know, but it, it does, it does break up the movie a little bit, uh, you know. It kind of, you know, takes it's, it, you know, kind of cuts into the rhythm of, of the movie. But anyway, so yeah, so Jake Gyllenhaal he does a dynamic job uh, in 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 this movie, and so that's why I was excited to, you know, when I saw him in the trailers, I'm like, oh, great! I mean, you know, somebody like Jake Gyllenhaal gives a, a Michael Bay movie like this some credibility, and it, it I, I, and I remember when I was watching Jake Gyllenhaal in this movie, I kept thinking back to his character in Nightcrawler for some reason. And that was another Jake Gyllenhaal movie that took place in, in LA and, and had a, a car chase for a brief portion of the movie. And, but obviously Jake Gyllenhaal's character in that movie was another bad guy, but much more psychotic in, in that one. But 
Yeah, so this and then this also this movie also has a I would say a third main character in there, and it's the EMT uh, named Cam uh, that uh, they take hostage in the ambulance, and she's the one trying to save the uh, cop's life, and so she's played by Asa Gonzalez, and you may know Asa Gonzalez from she was uh, John Hamm's uh, Squeeze in Baby Driver. And she also she was also in um, Hobbs and Shaw. She played I think like a weapons dealer in in that movie. She was in there very briefly, very briefly, and she does she she adds some heart and soul uh, to to this movie. And there is there is they they do have a scene near the beginning. So they're in this movie they establish you know the backstory or just who, or who each of the characters are. Will, Danny. And then also uh, Cam. And there is a pretty uh, gut-wrenching scene at the beginning of the movie where Cam has to respond to a car accident. And unfortunately, there's like a little girl in the backseat that got impaled with something. And the little girl is, is awake and conscious, but the, they have to bring out the jaws of life and, and, and uh, you know just uh, try to save her. And so she's there with the little girl in the car and just trying to calm her down and ask the little girl to be brave. And it's, it's, it's a heart wrenching scene. Um, and so, but so it just is there to show that she's, she's professional, she's compassionate, but then later, just a little bit, a little bit after that in the movie, uh, she's got a, a, you know, a partner in the ambulance driver and, you know, he's, he's, you know, kind of just, he's, he's, it's his first day. He's a rookie and he's just, he's, he's, uh, He's kind of he just just doesn't uh, know when to quit. He's kind of just I don't know leaning on a little thick with the compliments after their first gig there at that accident. And oh man, like you know you you were so great. And oh, wow, you're such a you know like it's it's such such a you know a, a opportunity to watch you work. And oh man, how'd you do that? I mean, and she's just like, you know what? Stop, stop. It's just a job. They're just patients. They're just victims. We're helping out. It's just a job. You know, chill, relax, right? And so it just establishes that, you know, she's she's compassionate, she's adept and competent and professional at what she does, but she tries to separate herself and not let herself get too emotionally deep in the in in the job with the with the victims and that they're helping and and but she finds herself in this movie where she is you know, she finds herself stuck in between a rock and a hard place of uh, being Jake Gyllenhaal and Yahya Abdul Mateen seconds uh, hostage there, and she's got to save a cop, no less. In the middle of it, you know she she definitely shows some emotional depth, and I, I think that she was the most pleasant surprise in in this movie. I mean, I'm, Jake Gyllenhaal is the one that steals the movie, or not doesn't steal the movie, but he, he definitely takes a cake and wins the gold medal as far as um, you know acting chops and 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 how he plays his role in this movie. But that's not a surprise. With Isa Gonzalez, it was a surprise from her. So not that she's a bad actress. It's just, you know, like with a lot of Michael Bay movies, he'll have – let's uh, let's be quite frank. The way that Isa Gonzalez looks, I mean, she's, she's stunningly beautiful. And a lot of times Michael Bay just likes to have women like that as eye candy. Like just, you know, all, you know, all, all beauty, no brains. Not, 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 not in the case of, of the character of Cam. I mean, she obviously she is stunning, but she also is hard nosed, hard edged, and and knows how to get the job done. And uh, she, uh, you know, she gets a, she makes you care about her character and what happens to her. And you just, you obviously you just, you know, you just want her to make it out of this uh, just fine. And apparently, so does Will, because uh, Will is not a professional bank robber. He's just here out of uh, desperation. And I won't give away too much in the movie. This is a spoiler-free uh, review. Um, but, yeah, Will is, you know, more compassionate to her and, and uh, looking out for her, you know, more than, uh, say, Danny's Danny's character. But, yeah, they, you know, they're, they're you know, i got to say another thing with this movie here, just to kind of break away from you know, the actors and the roles and, and that side of it is I'm a big fan of drone camera footage and just watching like just how, you know, professional drone operators get 
you know, film footage or, 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 or footage or whatever, right? And I watch a lot of YouTube videos where they show these uh, professional uh, camp or uh, drone pilots. And, uh, you know, they're doing things like, you know, doing drone races and that kind of thing. And uh, Michael Bay, he hired a like a 19-year-old uh, drone pilot to get some of the most incredible, incredible shots that you'll ever see in, in film on this. And it is incredible. I'm, I'm like, I'm glad that, I mean, he's, it's the first movie I've seen that's taken this much advantage of just how uh, incredible and dynamic that, uh, you know, drone usage can be when it comes to getting footage. And it's, it, there's, there's one shot where they have a drone and it's like up at the top of LA city hall. And it just does like a 360 and then like just dives down towards the street. And there's a, just, uh, it's just, it's just incredible. Just like, Whoa, you know? And it, I just, you know, a lot of people will look at that. Like, oh my God, that's just Michael Bay. He's just showing up. He's just, he's just trying to show that he knows how, you know, that there's drone operators out there and he's just trying to look, you know, cool. Like, well, yeah, because <laughs> it looks cool. <laughs> Come on, it looks cool, and he and it it should be in a movie like this. I mean, this is a high intensity kinetic chase thriller, and using drone footage, you know, like you, you know, using those in this movie, this is a perfect movie to use those in. You know, so so all the haters that I hear hating on the drone footage and thinking it's too much. All right, hey, you know what? Go watch Coda again. All right, so and I. <laughs> I shouldn't knock on Coda. Coda is a good movie. There's a time and place for a, a you know, nice little quiet family drama like Coda. You know, no car chases to be seen. There's, there's a time and chase, time and place for that. But not every movie, you know, has to be Moonlight, right? Not every movie has to be Coda. Not every movie, you know, has to be the power of the dog. Okay, you can have some slam bang action fun, right? You know, where you get to turn your brain off for two hours and just Give your eyes some candy to feast its eyes on, right? So, or feast itself on. Yeah, there you go. Um, but yeah, so the 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 drone footage is is pretty dynamic. Um, and <laughs> and you know what? I I forgot to say that you know my favorite actor in this movie. There's another another role that I, that I I think is my favorite uh, role in this movie, and that's the that's the character of Nitro. Yeah, Nitro, Nitro. And when you watch this movie and you see Nitro, you'll know. Why I think that he's my favorite uh, character in the movie. Uh, yeah, Nitro happens to be a big old bull mastiff dog. Oh yeah, <laughs> oh yeah. I, but I am a big dog disciple, and this movie uh, it has uh, yeah this uh, this big old bull mastiff dog. He's like the the, the dog that uh, this uh, police captain uh, played by Garrett Dillahunt. Uh, he, that's his that's his dog, and he's just. Drive around with his big old fuzzy bull mastiff dog named Nitro, and then that's when he gets the call that there's this downtown L.A. bank robbery. And uh, so I just any 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 any, any movie with uh, you know a, a dog in it, you know, it, it automatically I, it automatically gets at least one star from me. And there's th- this movie has a lot of intense scenes in it, but I'd say one of the more intense scenes is so since. Uh, Bull Mastiff's, you know, or since Nitro's daddy has to go off and do his job as a police captain, uh, you know, he tells some other cop, like, hey, you know, get Nitro home, you know, uh, put him in this other cop car and, and get him home so where he's safe. And so there, uh, there's a portion of the car chase uh, where they're, they're chasing, they're, uh, the chase is in the, the, like the parking ramp of the LA or parking garage of the LA uh, Convention Center. And this cop is, you know, in his car by himself. Chasing down uh, Will and Danny, and next thing you know, old Nitro pops up in his back seat. And he's like, "What? The, what? Who put a dog in here?" And lo and behold, of course, right after that, that's when you know Jake Gyllenhaal starts firing rounds out the back of the ambulance at this very cop car. And I found myself, I was like, "You, this movie better not kill Nitro. This this movie better not kill a dog." I just because I'm I'm walking out of the theater because any any movie that kills you know kills a dog, boom. That one star that you got now now it's getting negative five stars. <laughs> yeah. Unless it's a movie like John Wick, where the dog gets killed, and John Wick goes out there he just kicks butt like in in vengeance of the dog. Then I'm like, okay, then you got me back, you know, because then then I know you know all the baddies are 
are, uh, you know, meeting their demise in the name of, you know, of doggy vengeance, you know. <laughs> and But luckily, you'll be happy to know. You can breathe a sigh of relief. Nitro, uh, Nitro st- stays with us. Okay, so Nitro is, Nitro is just fine because his, his daddy finds out that, you know, that Nitro's in the back of one of these cop cars that's involved in the chase, and he's like, all right, everybody, back off, back off. Like, give him some room, give him some space, and he lets uh, – uh, Jake Gyllenhaal and and and, and company kind of get some space and and they back off the chase there, but uh, yeah. So th- I thought that was a so yeah. He, that's my favorite role in this movie, Old Nitro. And so as as and then also I should let you know that this movie uh, this is this is not like an original idea. Uh, this actually this movie was based on a a '90s Danish film um, of all things, if you can imagine that. So I I would imagine this '90 '90s Danish film. Probably didn't have as much drone footage and explosions and, uh, you know, miniguns firing, you know, rounds left and right and all that. Uh, uh, so it definitely didn't have that. But uh, so, yeah, I might have to check out this 90s Danish film. It's uh, probably going to seem like Driving Miss Daisy in comparison to to this movie. Uh, but, uh, you know, and, and another thing I noticed about this movie is Michael Bay is about the only director that can get away with having characters in his movies reference, make references to his, to some of his former movies. And because there's a, there's a, a few characters, they make a reference to Michael Bay's movie, The Rock. And they also reference Bad Boys in this. And I, I thought that was, that, that kind of made me chuckle a, a little bit. Talking about The Rock and quoting, you know, The Rock quotes and that kind of thing. Um, my guy uh, Wale, uh, the the rapper Wale, you may uh, be familiar with Wale. He actually makes an appearance in this. He plays uh, one of Danny's assistants, and his his character his character is one of the, one of the goofier characters in it. He just kind of plays like this clueless, naive uh, guy that that Danny calls on to help him out with the odd jobs and that kind of thing. And uh, he he brings some comic relief uh, in, into this movie. And he just, I, 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 if I was him, I would have asked, like, can 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 you give me a role where I'm not, I don't come off as such a goofball, you know? <laughs> can I get, can I get a little bit more um, uh, gravitas, you know, or, or or you know, a little bit more toughness uh, to my role? So there's, uh, yeah. So it's, um, you know, but there's a lot of characters in this movie. I mean, there's a, you know, there's a lot of people chasing uh, these guys down. Um, Michael Bay, he had a lot of uh, a lot of help like, from law enforcement in this movie because, as I've seen in like a lot of his interviews that he's done for for the press for this movie, Michael Bay says, "Hey, you know what? Uh, I didn't I, I didn't know, but apparently a lot of law enforcement love my movies, you know, which I was frankly shocked at because I mean, for uh, you know a lot a lot of cop cars and uh, a lot of police equipment gets just gets decimated." Uh, in in Michael Bay movies, I mean, look no further than all the Transformers movies. <laughs> it's just like it seems like every two seconds, you know, some cop car or you know some uh, police station's getting blown up or some cops are getting you know thrown in the air by some Transformers explosions or something like that. It's uh, yeah, but law enforcement they love love his movies, and I guess it's it's probably just because you know most Michael Bay movies are just a feast for the eyes, right? And also, I think what might uh, you know, be you know, might what might be getting him some love from law enforcement is, uh, he, he did a great movie a few years ago. My my personally, my personal favorite Michael Bay movie did a movie called Thirteen Hours: The Secret Soldiers of Benghazi, and that that's a great movie, and that's a very um, a movie that pays homage to uh, the military and and and, and in con- uh, military contractors uh, like in that movie, and uh, but. This is this movie is up there uh, in my in my list of Michael Bay movies. It's definitely not down there with like Transformers two, but it's up there with like Thirteen Hours and the first Transformers movie and uh, The Rock and then the first Bad Boys. I like the first Bad Boys as well, and so it's it's up there in the upper echelon of of Michael Bay movies. And uh, yeah, so this movie is definitely one. Uh, if you if you haven't been able to tell so far, it's one I would recommend. Definitely see it on the big screen because. Yeah, it's it's just got slam bang action. That's a delight for the eyes, and 
it's not gonna do not gonna do it justice if you're watching it on your iPhone, okay? You know, or even on your big screen and all. Like, watch it on the movie big screen. I mean, do yourself do yourself a big favor. So, all right. Well, hey, with that, I'm gonna wrap it up. And as always, thanks for listening to this episode again. Please, uh, if you're on Apple Podcasts, uh, give it a five star review and scroll down to give it a five star review. Give it a uh, give it a five star rating. Give it a review. And all right, everybody, get out there. These movies aren't going to watch themselves. See ya. Hey, guys, don't leave the video quite yet. Okay, I've got a popo. They're coming after me. And I don't have much time to tell you, but you need to like and subscribe this video right here down below. It's right down there. It's just what it's waiting for you down there, okay? And make sure you watch these videos over here, too. You'll be doing me a big favor. I'll be in handcuffs pretty soon. All right, thanks for watching. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah.